I would be very interested in doing something with you, but I'm just going to think about it for a minute while one or two others say what they think, if I may. If you can get that's a bit cheeky, isn't it? See, uh, states his interest, uh, and then let everyone else pitch their offers, and then he'll just come in with something um, to nip them to the post. Let's see how this plays out. So in this video, you're going to see a pitch from Christina as she pitches for funds to knock down a former restaurant in, in the centre of Coventry and build 18 new apartments. This pitch was shown on the Property Elevator show on Sky Channel 192. Property Elevator is a pitching show where budding property entrepreneurs present their deals uh, in order to seek finance from five property angel investors. What we do on this channel is we kind of uh, show the pitch as it went out on Sky TV and I provide my background commentary and, and analysis uh, to what's being presented. The property angels that Christina will be pitching to are John Howard, Helen Chorley, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Wallwork, and myself, Ranjan Bhattacharya. If this is the first uh, one of these videos you've seen, make sure you watch all the others in the playlist. There's plenty to watch and learn from, from watching these property elevator pitches. We release them quite regularly, so make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as we upload. And make sure you smash that like button too. Now let me hand you over to Elizabeth Warburton as she has a little chat to Christina before she comes in to face us angels. So Christina, welcome to the show. It's great having you here. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Tell us a little bit about your deal and what you're after today. I already own a site in Central Coventry. It was originally a restaurant okay. and um, I'm in the process of demolishing it. Um, I'm, I've got full planning consent to build 18 apartments above a commercial unit um, and I require the funding to help me do that. Fantastic. Um, it is the biggest project I've done to date, mm -hmm. so uh, that's the reason that I think I'm going to get the best value out of um, using one of the angels to, um, to help me do that. Because yep, with their experience absolutely. and track record. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Thank you. I'll have a little chat to you when you get out. Christina would like us to invest in Coventry, which uh, I was there recently speaking at Coventry University and actually I was very impressed with the city. It's Bit of a show off there, speaking at a university. It's come a long way and the university is right in the centre and this is close by I think and it's a demolition and, and, re, and um, rebuild. I feel like I'm doing a job for her. Shall we uh, get her in? Hi Christina, thank you very much for coming in today. Have you come all the way from Coventry or? I have today, yes I have, because I've been on site today. Do tell us a bit about yourself and about the development you'd like us to try and fund for you. Myself, I am um, a property developer. I've been a property developer for the last two years full time. I am I'll probably describe myself as a, um, a creative and very resilient individual. I've seen some ups and downs in, the, um, in my time with property. Um, and I do have a blend of uh, strategic, operational um, and technical skills. I have a uh, technologies background and um, that was what I did as a career. So today I'm here to um, offer you the opportunity to well, work with me on a project that, um, as you have seen from the pictures, has already started. Uh, I went through the process with my uh, wife. We bought the site um, from a gentleman who wanted to retire. And um, having bought the site, then took it through the planning consent process, got full planning for 18 apartments above a commercial unit. Now that's nice. She already owns the site, so that uncertainty has gone. She's already been through the pain of securing permission uh, to demolish this existing building and build the 18 new apartments. Having got the consent, then went through the process of having the um, demolition um, at least started. It's due to complete around the... Um, 7th of September. I said. It's always good to knock down a uh, site as quickly as possible because obviously if you knock down the site there's no em empty business rates to pay which can be a little bit of a drag when you're uh, owning a site and you're waiting for uh, some time for planning permission to come in. It's about thinking uh, uh, about how to, to fund the project um, and I realised that because it's my largest project and um, possibly because of a slight complexity in that we, we bought the property 
um, in our CureOps pension, so I offshored our pensions, we consolidated and bought the um, site into that pension fund. So this is a bit technical really, QOPS is a form of pension uh, which people set up offshore uh, outside of the United Kingdom but they use that as a vehicle for purchasing commercial properties uh, here in the UK and that's really all you need to know for the purposes of understanding this, making sense of this pitch. And so I felt that the, the standard debt model might be a little bit more challenging because of that um, and also because I don't have demonstrable experience of projects of this size. So having um, purchased this and spent money on it, we've um, invested so far uh, a million pounds, approximately. So that's a very, very good point that uh, Christina raises. When you do, uh, I mean, pensions uh, and investing in commercial property, in particular through a pension, uh, does give you great tax advantages. But it also can put you at a fine funding disadvantage. Um, there are banks that are willing to lend, but the loan to values or the amount of debt they're willing to extend to you is considerably less. And with QOPs being offshore, uh, the funding options become even less. So for that reason, you need a high degree of cash to actually uh, make these sort of projects happen if they're funded by a pension um, whether it's in the UK or abroad. The good thing about Christina is that they basically bought the site and they've sunk their own funds into getting the project to this stage and they really need angel funding, equity funding to take it from here on to the next level. And I'm looking today for two million pounds worth of development funding to enable us to complete that and with a calculated GDP of um, 3.8 million upwards. Um, I believe it represents a, um, a good deal to um, one or more of you to assist in, um, in, in creating that product for me. Our intention is to create it as serviced accommodation um, with a full planning consent is for sui generis on that basis and um, each, of the, um, each of the apartments is totally self-contained. I'm unsure at the moment what we do with the commercial unit and I'm also a little bit more flexible. It doesn't have to be that. The site actually sits on the cusp of, almost in the heart of, a £350 million regeneration scheme which went to public consultation, um, completed last month, um, is expected to go for full planning in September with the expectation of a decision Q1 next year and then beyond that there will be um, developers on site. So I see that as a huge opportunity for service accommodation to have um, a much higher demand for um, mm. uh, people needing to be very close to. Now that's a good tip for developers large and small really. Um, and that is to coattail off the back of uh, infrastructure spend in your local area. If you can see that planning permission is being put forward to redesign or redevelop your town centre and you buy something right next door to where there's significant activity going on, then you are basically going to ride on the coattails of that larger investment. Do that site for, um, for quite a period of time. Why did you buy it in the first place? The commercial agent who, um, uh, who introduced me to this yep. uh, was the gentleman that sold me the HMO. Ah, uh, right, yep. Um, and I'd, um, I'd approached them regarding a number of uh, HMO possibilities they'd had um, and he came to me and said, would you be interested? Yep. Was it on the market or? It wasn't on the market at the time. The, okay. um, the owner was a personal Retire. friend of his. Okay, excellent. That's the first question. Have they said, are there any grants available potentially for your development if, if it happens? That's a very good question. Actually, not for my development. But they're, they've um, already announced um, a £100 million grant for their um, larger development. Now, that's a very good question um, that John asked. I mean, uh, in higher value areas, London, South East, and generally higher value areas around the country, there's very few grants available for redeveloping any property at all. But in some parts of the country where the end values are a little bit lower, uh, you often find that there is grants, grant money available, either central government grants or local authority grants, uh, because it's in recognition that the cost of the build out, the cost of developing out, um, it just may not be viable without some help. Um, I have to say I've not approached okay. them well, for a grant for the development. I didn't know that, that. I would definitely look into. So the 3.8 million GDV, that's based upon a commercial valuation for the service accommodation rent, is that right? 
It is, um, and it's based on uh, an assumed occupancy of um, 70% um, and uh, a yield of 6.5%. So I was trying to sort of keep that um, more realistic. Do you know... What now, when you're looking at service accommodation and that kind of stuff, it's very good figures uh, that she has decided to go off. She's gone for a 70% occupancy. If she had come in and said, you know, uh, you're basically assuming it fully let, then you're basically in cloud cuckoo land. But I think she's been quite conservative, being right in the centre of town. Um, this sort of project should achieve a greater occupancy than that. What the bricks and mortar valuation would be as opposed to the commercial valuation? I calculated £175,000 per unit uh, and, and circa half a million pounds for the commercial unit. The GDB is 3.8, okay. 3.8. Yeah. But that, that's assuming 6.5% yield on the, on, the, on the commercial. That's right. And um, rent of 38 grand or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done my research on the commercial um, uh, yields uh, and what I wanted to do was just to make it work um, at what I thought was a more conservative level. I think that's probably, I mean, I obviously don't quite know where it is um, in Coventry, but I think that's probably a bit strong, unless you manage to get a, a, a national covenant, a good national covenant. I think any yield is probably like to be 8% to, for, to a, lo, a lo, more local covenant in there. But you might get lucky, you might get a you know, Tesco's, 24-hour Tesco's or whatever, in which case it would be lower than that. So. Yeah. Now, what John's alluding to here with commercial properties, I mean, the, uh, the serviced accommodation estimates that she presented were great, but on the commercial element, because they're retaining a commercial unit on the ground floor, um, what happens is that uh, in higher value areas, you tend to get lower yields in a 5 6% as she was uh, talking about. But in northern areas or in areas where they, you have slightly lower values, um, the yield expectation is far higher. Um, it's typically 8%, can be 10%, 11%. Um, and the reason for that is because um, it, it, it is an indicator of risk. Um, risk in terms of if that property was to become vacant, how easy is it to re-let that commercial unit? Now in more prosperous areas, in more higher value areas, commercial units are perceived to be easier to re-let. So that void time is lower, and that's why people uh, will pay a little bit more for them and accept a lower yield. That's usually how the yield equation works in different parts of the country. So I fully agree the commercial yield expectation on this particular unit would be a little bit higher in, um, uh, in that part of the world, which means the value, the end GDV value of that commercial unit will be slightly less than she's, she's, she's talking about in her figures. Yeah. You know, it's difficult to pitch, I do appreciate that. How close is it to the university, please? Five minute walk. Five minute walk, OK. To Coventry University. Just on the GDV at 6.5%, that, that's on all of the service accommodation as well, is it? That is, yes. Yeah, I think that is, that is quite strong then for another operator coming in. Have you any experience of service accommodation? Why, why did you go that route with the planning and not just C3 apartments? So I mentioned that, um, that we purchased the um, property in the pension. You can only do commercial development uh, okay. through the pension. Yep, um, you know, the, the idea is to, um, to develop it and to hold it and to operate. I think this is one of the problems with investing in property, commercial property in particular, uh, through a pension. Because although um, the pension uh, investing does give you some advantages, you're letting the tail wag the dog. What you really should be doing is saying, right, um, this is the site. What's the best angle or profit uplift on this particular site? Um, and that should be the first question you, 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 you answer and clarify. Then after that, you look at, well, what's the best way of wrapping this investment? What's the best vehicle for buying it? Um, I think what they've done here is they've picked the investment vehicle being the QOP pension vehicle, and they're stuck with the constraints uh, that presents. So the question here is that are they doing serviced accommodation with those 18 apartments because that is the best strategy for this particular location or are they doing that because that's how they comply with the rules of the QRP pension? Um, and clearly one of the reasons that I'm here today is that um, I would like to be able to work with somebody who has got serviced accommodation experience oh. to, to help me with that. Um. Interesting. I've run a number of serviced accommodation blocks. 
I thought he was going to soon mention that, yeah. I think what you need to do is to go and find an operator to sign a pre-lease before you do anything more. Because if you've got an operator yeah. that's going to guarantee your income, it'll guarantee your valuation, it'll guarantee your finance, mm. it'll make the whole process a lot easier. If you go and build this with no operator, you're going to be really stuck if you can't find an operator. And why you, and you why won't can't really you operate it yourself? I hadn't intended actually taking a full-time job of operating. So you might be looking for an operator as well, potentially. Yeah. Very, very shrewd advice from uh, Nicholas. And I, as I said, I'll just repeat it very, very quickly. Um, that's because the reason for doing serviced accommodation is not uh, that Christina has gone out and analysed the market and found there's a massive demand for it. It's led by what the QOP rule says she can and can't do. So it's very, very key not to build this out on a speculative basis and to find that operator to sign a uh, sort of pre-let agreement before you start build out. And when you do that, you're going to find it a lot easier to finance and fund. Okay, that's good to know. We, w we want to know why you're here. Very interesting. What you need. I like the service accommodation model. We were talking about it before. I have just, I've uh, set up a service accommodation business and I, I do like it. Just out of interest, with the Curops um, pension, so you bought it in your crops, you offshored the pension and then bought it in that structure, is that right? That's right. So um, uh, I looked into it and um, basically we consolidated, um, Liz and myself, we consolidated our pensions into um, uh, this qualified recognised offshore pension scheme. Um, it's based in Malta um, and... <laughs> oh, fancy that. <laughs> my, can, my part of the world. In, in some respects, it was a very good um, model for, um, for developers because you have the, um, the governance of your pension trustees who've got your interests to look after. Um, and uh, so I had to pitch the project to them, present the business plan, um, before they would agree to uh, to fund the project, and then it was fairly straightforward beyond that. Did you assess that against the SAS model? Um, the SAS model. So far as, as establishing a, a small self-administered scheme and lending the money out. Going offshore had a number of other distinct advantages, okay. because um, you have lifetime limits in the UK. So when you take it offshore, those lifetime limits are there um, eliminated. Um, and um, the, the other main one is that um, if either of us passed away, um, the, the balance of the cure-ups goes to one or the other without any tax implications, inheritance tax. So we're getting a bit bogged down here with the specifics of different types of pensions. The SAS, that pen pension that Paul Mahoney is talking about, is basically a UK pension, which uh, often people use for investing in commercial property. As I said again, um, it's, it's the deal that we should be looking at rather than the wrapper that we're using to hold uh, that deal. Thanks. And they take a first charge over the property, I assume? No, they don't take first charge, they own the property, so they are the shareholders. It's the SAS model that you need to take a charge. Which means that for funding, you know, whoever is um, putting up the uh, development funds, they can take a first charge on it. I may not be your obvious partner when you look round the room, however, I have just delivered £27 million pounds worth of development in Ipswich, on time and on budget. I have a partner who's very bright, much brighter than me, and I think he would be, and I would be, together we would be very interested in this. Um, maybe not exactly how you see it now, maybe slightly differently, but if it would be slightly differently, it, it would be to your advantage. Okay, so I'm open to that. I would be very interested in doing something with you, but I'm just gonna think about it for a minute while one or two others say what they think, if I may. If you can get- That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? See, uh, states his interest, uh, and then let everyone else pitch their offers, and then he'll just come in with something um, to nip them to the post. Let's see how this plays out. The first charge on the building, have you explored any other standard development finance? Um, I had conversations with some of the funders that I've used already, yeah. um, including some that aren't, if you like, the mainstream banks and so on. Um, I've, I've got quite a lot of commercial experience. I've executed a couple of option agreements and in the past few years, and uh, there's a few that have failed and not worked at all. Um, so I, I, kind of, I can work my way around any kind of structure of deal. Um, I'm comfortable in that space and I'd be very happy to work with um, somebody who's got more experience and help, that can, can help, I suppose, present some of the possibilities that, that just aren't in my head because no, I, I don't I, have I, that. I, and I can see that. And there's, a, there's something that I'm, I'm just mulling over which I think um, might, be, 
more beneficial to us both. I think you need to find a way of financing this, buying out the pension so you've got full flexibility to rejig the units out of sui generis. I think that would add a huge planning gain, personally. Um, so so I, I could switch. Um, I don't have to take it out of the pension to switch it from sui generis. Um, uh, it, that's, that's not the issue. It just means that I can't keep them and let them keep out. Them I would have yeah. to okay. sell them. That's still a commercial activity. Um, I don't know what that does to the VAT though, does that? I'll just kind of state where I am. Um, I was looking at kind of the 20% return on, on, on capital over the two years and that wasn't particularly where I'd be looking but I didn't realise it was first charge um, basis which does make a big difference in terms of the, re the return I expect for the security. They're very much interlinked for me. Um, however, I'm not a service accommodation expert I've got no desire to become one, so I don't think I'm the right person for this deal, but it's very exciting. I love the, I love the um, centrality of, of the location, and I think you're going to be spoiled for choice here, so best of luck with that. Ranjan, would you, have you got something to say? You're being very quiet, for you, especially for you. Very, very suspicious, Christina. When Ranjan's quiet, he's thinking... Very seriously. Could be good, could be bad, we don't know. I love the centrality of the location. I mean, uh, my geography outside the N25 is very poor, but I, I, operate, I operate by a simple postcode theory where if it, if it has a, a two letters and a one, then that's the centre of town, wherever it is. What is the exit for the investor? Or are you looking for the investor to basically stay in uh, well, I, th I think that depends because I, I, I am open to an alternative deal structure and variation on um, what we uh, execute based on somebody else's experience. There's an obvious exit if it's, um, if it's a build and sale. Can I just drill down to your bill costs? You've got sort of, you know, one... I mean, exit is very important and I think um, I probably would have probed that point a little bit further. It seems the, the, the thing is, uh, when someone's selling on a project, there's a clear exit. Um, the, the development sold at the end, uh, everyone gets paid off and uh, people go on to the next deal. The problem with the hold on and operate is how does the investor get their money back? Um, so I think that issue hasn't really been addressed in the pitch so far. One line, 1.5 million plus the prelims at half a million. Is that as much detail as you've gone into? I'm hoping no, there's no, um, some serious I've got a full, full team on it. I've got a quantity surveyor. I, I'm just giving you the potted highlights. So, you know, I've got a very long set of detail and um, the calculations in the summary give me the um, price per square foot. That's what I've used um, there, you know, to provide you with that information. Was there an archaeological dig that's required? The only possibility is um, if we have to do anything, if there's a likelihood or possibility that there's any um, UXB or anything on it. We had a desktop survey, there's a possibility we may have to, once we get the um, down to the bottom slab, to actually do a couple of um, drill holes to see. Okay, well I'm, right, I'm ready to make you an offer subject to a couple of things because of course on a deal of this size, you know, it, it, the devil is in the detail, Christina. You must hope you appreciate that. And um, whatever I say is subject to further due diligence on, 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 on the deal itself because I need to look at it, analyse it and so on. But in principle, I would like to offer you the money you're looking for and I would like to take 60% of the deal, not the 50%, 50-50 that you're looking at. You've put your money in. You don't need to put any more money in at all. We will put the rest in, we will develop it to the best of our ability, be it flats, be it service accommodation, whatever we, we agree together, what we think is the best outcome. That's my offer. It's very clever actually, very clever offer actually, because he's given the option for an alternative exit, um, an alternative exit to keeping it long term on a serviced accommodation basis. I think the likely uh, best outcome for this uh, will be simply to build it out as apartments and sell them on. There's bang in the centre of town, it's bang on the edge of a brand new major regeneration of that city centre. The location is cracking. Um, so well located apartments should sell, uh, just sell them on, move on, do the next deal. Thank you.
I don't like the idea of finding an archaeological dig site and whatnot, although that could be mitigated with a bit of time. That's a chicken. Um, and on that bombshell, I guess you could say. By the way, I'm I think I think John would be an excellent partner for you, and I think that's an extremely generous offer, which I couldn't beat. Um, so, unfortunately, on that basis, um, I won't be investing. But good luck. It's an, an exci incredibly exciting site. As I say, I like the service accommodation model. I like how central it is. John will probably yeah, make the buck, buck, buck noise again for me. But I, I like central locations close to big cities. And, and I think this ticks that box. It's not necessarily a massive city, but given its centrality and what's going on, I think that works. Uh, again, I think it's a very good offer by John, though. And, and, I, th and I also think that John could probably add more value to the deal for you than I could. I like, the, so I like the end use. I think he can probably add more value to you to get it there. So I'll, I'll, I'll count myself out. But when it's done, let me know, because we might operate it for you. It's very well thought out. Um, it's very exciting, but it's not really my bag. But I think John has made you a great offer. Thank you. Um, I would like to accept that offer. Thank you very much. Okay, so looking at the smile, it looks like we got a deal. We did. Fantastic. Um, John made an offer and um, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. It's um, With a pedigree like his, um, I'm really looking forward to working with him. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm so, so happy for you. So what are the next steps? Well, he says we'll start on Monday. Oh, so, well, nothing like the present, <laughs> I wait, hey? <laughs> I, I, wait, I wait to see. Uh, of course, we've got um, you know to finish the demolition, which is just a matter of a few weeks away now. Okay. Um, and uh, we, we're going to have to sit down and look at those, uh, look at the plans. He seems to think he's got some ideas where we could get more value out of it. So I'm really excited to find out what that is. Brilliant. Uh, with his experience, that's what I was hoping for out of that sort of relationship. Great. So great result. Brilliant result. Thank so you. happy for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, <laughs> thank you for you know staying behind and um, and hearing me today. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure.